Let's make this envelope pillow cover. Ready to go? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make an envelope pillow cover. So easy, no zippers required. You can do it with one piece of fabric, but we are actually gonna use three because we're gonna do a simple quilt block for the front. But first I wanna tell you about this pillow. I met the owner, Eric, sure hope that's his name. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I met him at the Portland Quilt Show and these things were flying out of his booth and I can see why. It is uh, pressure activated. It really vibrates on my table. It, I mean, you can hear it when you're using it, but you, you put it like at your lower back and you sit down and you lean against it and it massages you. It's really, really cool. And I was talking to him and I was like, oh my gosh, I love these, but people could cover them because they come with lots of different materials. And he said, oh, I've never really thought about that, which was interesting because he was at a quilt show. It seemed like the obvious first choice. Oh, let's put a quilt block on that thing. So anyway, he did give me a deal, but I did give him money, full disclosure, because I told him I wanted to do a video about it because why not use a fun pillow? So all of his pillows have a design on one side. You can find them at mymassagepillow.com. And then they're plain on the other side. So if you want to cover a pillow that has a design on it, you need to be careful what fabric you choose to cover it with because some it'll show through. So like if you do something, let's see how this one looks. These are my star fabrics that I designed for Riley Blake. See, so if you put that over, so anything, any kind of pillow with a design, you're going to see that through. So think about that when choosing your fabrics. For that reason, I am going to use the blue and the red because we are not going to see anything through those. Nice and opaque. Now, how do you make this envelope? And it's called an envelope because it's like an envelope. It's going to overlap like that on the back. It's just going to kind of fit on there. It's a great way to update your pillows for the seasons, for the holidays, and not have a ton of storage. Instead of storing an entire pillow, you're just storing like the packaging. So you're going to take your tape measure and you're going to measure your pillow. Even if it says, you know, it's a 14 inch, it's a 16 inch, I would always measure it just to make sure they're not lying to you. So this one's about 14 and a quarter. And I always measure both ways on both sides. See, it's closer to 14 and a half there. And on the fattest part, this part that hides their zipper, we're not doing a zipper though, it's closer to 14 and a half. So I'm gonna call this a 14 and a half inch pillow. We're done with that for now. This feels counterintuitive to me, but I promise this is how it works. For a 14 and a half inch pillow, you're going to use a 14 and a half inch square fabric. And you might be like me and saying, but but Tara, you need to sew it together. What about the seam allowances? It's going to work. This is what makes it fit really nicely. Doesn't go on super, super easy, but it looks really good when you're done. Because we're going to do a really simple quilt block on the front, the front I'm going to square to 14 and a half after we put these together. And then the envelope back. So because we're doing a fancy front, it's going to go like this. We're going to have the front and we're just going to, well, it's not going to be super fancy, but we're going to do this quarter triangle block. We'll do that together. And then on the back, so that's the front. And on the back, it's going to be two pieces of fabric that are going to overlap. So it's the same width, 14 and a half here. And then this is we're going to round it to 12 and a half, 12 and a half. And how I got that was I took 14 and a half, I divided by two to seven and a quarter and then added five inches. But let's quickly cut the back. We're just going to make this 12 and a half. So 10, 11, 12 and a half. We'll just have a little strip left. We can do something fun with later. So here are our two pieces for the back, obviously wider. They're going to go like this. So what we're going to do with these is we are going to, on one of the long ends, we're going to fold it quarter inch, press that, fold it again, quarter inch, press that. And we're going to sew that this is, these are going to be the edges that, that overlap. So they're not going to be sewn to anything. 
So we're going to do both of those to get that ready. First, let's make this block. So I did make sure my envelope backs were 14 and a half inches wide, and then I pressed one long edge of each under and under to enclose that raw edge. So I'm just going to stitch close to close to there down each of these. One thing I love about that part is it doesn't have to be exact, not like piecing and not like putting these together. So I'm glad I chose red. Don't really see that at all. All right, back to the cutting table. Move all the equipment. To make a um, 14 and a half inch quarter triangle block, we're going to start with, a, with two squares an inch and a half bigger than that. So this, these two blocks are actually 16 inches. So I have these just right sides together. And now I'm going to take a pen, and this is one of those science pens, a Frixion clicker erasable pen. So when I heat it, like when I iron over it, it disappears. I love these. I'm going to draw on the diagonal so that I have that guideline. And then I'm going to pin this together because we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew two lines a quarter inch from each side of the line that I just drew. And that is we're going to actually be able to make two of these blocks with these two squares. So you could make two matching pillows by doing this and then making four envelope backs. But I am just going to do one for today. And as you can see, I'm not worried about over here. I'm mostly worried that the fabric stays where it's supposed to be where I'm going to be sewing. I might throw a pin out here and out here just for good measure. But now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to do those two stitch lines. It's a little bit faint, but we're going to sew a quarter inch from that line that we drew. And I do have a Janome sewing machine and this is the HP foot, which is a quarter inch from that line. So you just need to make sure you stay nice and straight so that we're going to get a nice straight fold to that. I put the pins far enough away that I don't have to worry about them until we're done. So I'm just going to go down this side and then we'll come back that other side. All right, so we have that sewn on quarter inch from each side of that line. Now I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and cut right down that line. All right. Okay, I got so tired of moving from my cutting place to my ironing board to the sewing machine that I got one of these tabletop ironing board things. Maybe it goes this way. It's flatter on that side. We're going to try it. Maybe I can move my camera one last time. So basically, we're just going to iron this open, and I am just going to Iron the seams to one side instead of flat open. So I'm going to go like that, like that. Grab my iron. Okay, now let's see if any. Oh yeah, it did it did moisten my workspace a little bit. So never leave your cutting mat under this thing. I thought it was supposed to stop the heat from doing that. I guess it just reduces the heat, but it's still better, not for a ton of stuff, but let's try this side, see if it works any different. You're testing this new ironing mat with me. Oh, but if you put your, if you leave your cutting mat under there, it will warp your cutting mat. So definitely don't do that. I may add a towel under here next time. And it wouldn't be good for ironing huge things, obviously. Yep, still a little bit wet. Either way you do it. Now we're going to take our two, our two blocks and we're going to put them right sides together opposite 
Okay, so the blue goes over the red, red goes over the blue. Not this way, or you're not going to get that crisscross effect. This way. And the main thing, because we're going to square this all off once we're done sewing it together, the main thing is to make sure this seam is lining up. There we go. That's all lined up. And now we're going to grab our pen again and we're going to do the diagonal and we're going to do the same exact thing, but going in the opposite direction. So as I said, when we're done, we're going to have two big blocks. So we could make another pillow cover. You could put this in the middle of a quilt. You could just save it for later. Who knows what? Use it for a table runner. Whatever you decide. So it's a little hard to see up here, but we're just going to do the same exact process. Now we just did the same thing in the opposite direction. So we're going to do the same thing and we're going to cut right along that line. Isn't that cool? So we're going to have two of these. And then we only need one, but we will get them both ready because we have them. So when I don't want to press the seam open, I just lay it down with the side that I want to stay, like stay flat like that, and then push that over so that it stays down flat until you grab it with your jacket. Let's see. Okay, so we'll just quickly press that open. Oh yeah trying to get in the habit of using these clappers because all the cool quilters do. I guess Taylor's started it. You iron over and then you push that down and it really makes that a nice sharp, sharp ironed spot. It also takes on a little bit of the heat. So like if you're ironing and flipping and flipping things, you're not going to burn your fingers quite as much. I just sometimes forget to do it, but they are a handy little tool, especially if you're doing a lot of really small things where you just really need it to be nice and tight and crisp. Okay. So if we want a 14 and a half inch square, we know that this center point needs to be on the seven and a quarter inch line. So I put it about where that is and I'm going to put my ruler down that. And yep, I did not guesstimate that well enough. So I'm going to pull that over. Okay. So that that point, does this look right? Always, always, always make sure you think it looks right before you cut anything. So I'm going to start over here and I'm going to cut at the 14 and a half. Oh, and then another fun thing about this ruler is it has these little kind of like flowers to make sure you have your diagonals, right? So if you slide this, that flower should go right along that seam, which it is, which helps me make sure, wait, that I'm lined up, right? And that everything is going to be squared off and everything is going to be okay. That doesn't look like it's okay, honestly, but we're going to go for it. Because if you recall, my squares were a slight bit off in the beginning. So I'm going to turn this so that my ruler isn't off the edge. All right, I'm going to turn that around. And we're going to do the same process once we turn this 90 degrees. Okay, so we have 14 and a quarter, or yeah, 14 and a half by 14 and a half. Phew! So we're going to leave this, we're going to put this sunny side up, the right side of the fabric up. Then we are going to put this the wrong side down. You'll see that's got a nice overlap, envelopey overlap. And then you're going to pin or clip 
all the way around. I'm going to pin because I have them here. I often prefer clips because they're a little bit faster and I never draw blood with them. And right there was where the other, the underneath envelope part matched. So that's why I went back and forth just to reinforce that area. I also was feeling for where the um, angle seam was on the, on the triangles. And I wanted to turn on that, even if it wasn't quite at the half inch mark, because my block wasn't perfect. If you have anything that's like flapping up like that, do not use your finger. I've seen too many pictures on Instagram of sewists who have had needles straight through their finger and bone. Sounds awful. So always use tip of a pen or a stiletto or something else and keep your fingers away from there. All right, now I'm just going to trim the corners. Don't get too close to that stitching and certainly don't cut it. Ready to see how we did? So we're just going to turn this right side out, push those corners out. It's certainly one of the easier projects you'll ever make to turn right side out. Okay, well, I can't get that on. This is too much of an overlap for this pillow, but we have another block. I'm going to do it where it only has like three to four inch overlap. Let's see how that goes. Let's see if the second time is a charm. So you can see I did a separate one because I used blue back. The one that wouldn't go on was red and it was overlapping a lot. So this one is overlapping this much. Let's see. So substantially different. Let's see what happens. I mean, this is a really firm pillow. So if you're doing a really firm pillow, you need to make this a little bit bigger or you need to have the overlap a little bit less, assuming we get it on this time. And ladies and gentlemen, I shouldn't assume. You gotta really get it on that bottom before you start moving any further. Get those corners on. Moment of truth. Getting this in here. The struggle is real, but oh my gosh, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. I haven't heard any seams rip yet, so that's a good sign. Oh my gosh, I did it. Okay. Okay. That was not easy. You might want to do a zipper cover for a pillow that is as firm as this one, but we did it. And we also learned that sometimes you have to adjust how much of an overlap you have in order to get that case on and off. But look at how perfect that looks. I mean, there's barely any empty space. It looks very professional and ready to make my house look super patriotic.